What's going on guys? Uh, I'm going to try to resume the slip joint build, but before I do, I did notice that as I uploaded the last video, I believe it was number five in the series, uh, that unfortunately it looks like it uploaded short. Uh, in other words, there were supposed to be three or four clips uh, that were kind of spliced together, showing different milling processes and uh, giving a slight recap of what we've done on the knife and uh, where we're about to go with it. But unfortunately, it looks like it only grabbed that first clip when I uploaded it. And uh, thinking that they were all uploaded, I went ahead and deleted the original footage off of my phone uh, to free up some space for these next videos. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I didn't notice it until after the fact. So uh, I lost quite a bit of footage uh, showing not only the milling of the backspring area of the tang, uh, but also of the nail nick itself. So uh, I'll just give kind of a real brief walkthrough of what I did. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you, uh, but it should hopefully be uh, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, so uh, what we did, we simply just stuck this in the vise, squared it up, and milled out a nice square uh, pocket for our back spring uh, to ultimately fit into. Uh, this will be heat treated first, and then we'll go ahead and square it up uh, to fit precisely in place. Uh, but you can see how it's going to fit in uh, to that nice square pocket we milled in there. Uh, you don't need to use a milling machine or an end mill for this. You can use hacksaws and files. Uh, you can even use a, an abrasive cutoff wheel in the drill press. Uh, I've seen a number of different ways uh, to get that relief cut out of there. But uh, for me, since I have the mill and the end mills, uh, it's a lot easier and more precise for me to just stick it in the vise and do a quick... Uh, cut with the end mill uh, and I'll know I have a nice uh, perfectly square cut to start with. Uh, the next part of the process was simply cutting in the nail nick and uh, for that I used a custom made uh, fly cutter bit uh, that I shaped for purpose. Uh, I got this idea from another gentleman on a knife making forum. Uh, I don't remember his name to give him the proper credit but uh, basically I just shaped the end of this fly cutter uh, to the inside profile. Uh, more or less of the nail nick and uh, using a slow speed and a very slow feed rate I was able to advance it into the blade uh, while in the vise uh, probably to about 25 or 30 thousandths uh, maybe a little bit more than that but uh, the goal is to give yourself enough nail nick that once we flat grind this uh, there will be plenty left for the nail to grab uh, but that we're also not going all the way through the back side uh, when we flat bevel this side. <clears throat> so uh, there's a number of different ways to do a nail nicks. Uh, I've seen guys punch them in with a homemade punch. Uh, I've also seen uh, abrasive wheels shaped uh, into kind of that inside profile and uh, ran in using a drill press or a cross slide table, even a milling machine. Uh, you can use dovetail cutters. Uh, whether inverted or not, just orient your blade accordingly. And uh, even slitting saws uh, for maybe a straight nail nick or a long pull. But uh, I've decided to go ahead and try this technique. Uh, it's something that will probably change in the future as I think there's probably uh, some better ways of doing this. Uh, if anything, I probably need to start thinking about getting a new tool bit and uh, shape it a little bit differently uh, so it cuts a little nicer. Uh, but this should leave me with a pretty good nail nick once it's all heat treated and uh, surfaced and flat ground. So uh, we'll see what that looks like when we're done. Uh, one thing I did have to do, uh, because this bit could stand to be a little bit sharper, it did deform uh, just the very top uh, and kind of bent it out a little bit. Uh, I just put that down on my granite plate and uh, tapped it with a hammer to kind of straighten everything back in line. And uh, you can see it's still pretty flat and pretty straight. You got a little hump there still. That'll grind out. And uh, everything should look all right uh, once we start finishing everything. So uh, as we sit right now, we're pretty much ready for heat treat. I've actually got my ovens heating up as we speak. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit more detail on that process and the various temperatures and uh, things that we need to consider uh, for that when we get there. Uh, but in the meantime, while our ovens are heating, I'm actually going to move on to the next step, uh, which will be milling reliefs uh, in and around the pivot area uh, 
for the tang uh, so that we don't get any rub marks or scratches from opening and closing the knife. And uh, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'll use this case swell in jack. And uh, if you look at the tang by the maker's mark there, uh, it may not be as readily noticeable on this because of the brass liners being so much softer than the blade steel. But you do tend to get some rub marks, uh, if not some light scratches, uh, kind of radially uh, out from the pivot. And uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about in this little dab of grease or oil there. Just kind of running uh, from one side to the other. Uh, and that's because this actually makes contact with the liners as you're opening and closing it. And uh, you would have the same thing on this, uh, since this will be the thickest part of the blade once everything's ground. Uh, it will be in constant contact with the handle. And uh, as such, it would be rubbing uh, if we didn't cut that relief. And uh, it just makes for some unsightly marks, uh, whether rub marks or scratches. And uh, being as they're very easy uh, to eliminate or avoid, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to set the mill up uh, again to mill a relief out around that pivot area. And uh, what I've actually already done with this one is uh, more or less marked uh, the limits of where I'm going to remove that material. So what I've already marked here is the back spring. You can see right here where that's going to sit. We want to leave as much material under that as we can, uh, but remove everything just past that, kind of in and around that pivot area, uh, to where we leave just kind of a small, almost like a raised area or a washer for the blade to ride on. So we'll remove kind of this area here, uh, in and around up to there to the back point and it'll make a lot more sense so uh, once you see it being done but uh, how we determine that obviously you could stick your back spring in place and uh, kind of mark its limits uh, roughly thereabouts and then you can put your blade into a pivot and uh, see even where that would end on this side and then when closing it will mark right where the kick intersects the inner side of the handle right there and then follow that uh, to roughly the closed position uh, which would be give or take there and uh, we really just want to remove any material uh, that this portion of the blade would touch So uh, let's go ahead and go set this up on the mill, and then I'll turn the camera back on and show that process. Alright guys, uh, I realize the last few videos have been pretty poor as far as viewing angles and being able to see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to try to do a little bit better with that uh, as we do these next uh, steps. But uh, what I have here is a rotary table that I've set up for milling my liner reliefs uh, or the insides of my handle scales, uh, since this one technically doesn't have liners. And uh, what, is it? what it is, it's just a rotary table uh, that's got a piece of micarta bolted down to it uh, with a kind of a makeshift clamp and then a pin in the very center of the table. And uh, that allows me to turn it around that center pin and uh, remove evenly the material around the pivot. So how we currently have it set up, it's actually centered exactly with the center of the spindle. Uh, I did that earlier by chucking up an eighth inch pin and uh, sticking it down in the middle here. Uh, and then I took that out, put my half inch or five eighths end mill in, uh, whatever that is. <clears throat> and uh, now what I'm gonna do is offset it just a little bit so that I'm milling everything uh, but just the uh, center portion around the pivot and uh, we don't have to offset it very much uh, we just want the outer periphery of that end mill though 
uh, to go just past that area we marked out for the kick or the tang on the blade. So hopefully you can still see those marks. And you can see that the corner of our end mill is going to be right about in line with those marks. Now uh, what we're going to do, we're going <clears> to <throat> make sure everything's secure in place. And uh, then we're going to mill down about, say, eight or ten thousandths uh, into the handle scale and uh, follow that around our area of travel. Uh, where the tang would otherwise contact while opening and closing. So uh, I'll try to kind of get a good camera angle on this while it's happening. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. And it would help if we turned our drive on for the milling machine. And as far as where to stop, I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it. Uh, we'll stop just around the back spring area. And then we'll rotate all the way around uh, to the end of the back spring there. And that'll make more sense when we get it done. Just going to touch off on the end mill. All right, we're just starting to cut. So now I'm going to count, uh, say about eight or ten thousandths. and then finish my cut. Carefully wipe that away so we see where we need to go. Let me finish this up and then I'll turn the camera back on and uh, show you what we ended up with. Alright, we're uh, pretty well done with the first side. So I'll go ahead and remove my center pin from my jig here. And then pull my liners out. And uh, now you can see uh, the area that I removed. Uh, let me grab a blade and a pivot. And, uh, it should begin to make more sense uh, why we did what we did. <clears throat> So as you can see, as I close the blade, we have plenty of clearance. To keep from contacting the inside of that scale when we close the tang area of the knife. And uh, we're 
essentially just riding on uh, what's almost equivalent to a washer uh, on that inside pivot area. And uh, truth be told, I probably could have gone one size of an end mill down. Uh, I think I usually do. I uh, didn't need to quite remove that much, but uh, better too much than not enough. Uh, we may put a smaller end mill in for the other one. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, even this out and do the same to the other side. So uh, I'll rotate this over in the jig, uh, just go the opposite direction. Uh, we want to make sure to kind of square that up, make sure we're the same on both sides. And uh, have pretty much the same area removed back here as well. So I'll go ahead and do that to the uh, other side of this and then the next set of handle scales. And uh, hopefully by that point our ovens will be ready and we can move on to heat treat.